So, the last global event has ended, we've got all the content that was supposed to be coming with patch 1.8, and now, the next thing that's on my mind, and probably on the mind of a lot of you guys as well, is year 3 content! Is there going to be any? If yes, what are we getting? If no, why not? Is a Division 2 game in development? If yes, when is that coming out? If no, why not? Obviously, I do not have all the answers, uh, and this is going to be Mostly a speculation based video, so don't expect any facts or any news updates going into this. But I did want to talk about it because I do have some expectations and I can imagine that a lot of you guys also have their own expectations. So yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we just talk about it? First and foremost, do I believe that we're getting any year 3 content for the Division? Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually believe so, uh, although I do not expect too much from it. I think what's going to happen this year is that the developers are going to put the previous global events on the rotation. They kind of already hinted at that during the state of the game. They're going to have a new global event every month, which are basically the old global events. And then you can farm those again for all the older classified gear sets. This will allow everybody that wasn't able to get everything during the global events to sort of play catch up and to experience the global events again. Well, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to play Resistance when uh, the second global event comes back and try to get to some ridiculous wave because of the multiplier. That's something that is still on my to-do list, so to speak. But aside from that, uh, I don't think we should be expecting too much. I don't think we're going to get any major update, anything as big as that patch 1.8 was. Um, I'm still expecting there to be uh, some smaller patches. Uh, I'm not talking about the hotfixes like they did for the Alpha Bridge bug, but I am expecting some sort of patch 1.8.1 to be released sometime early this year. Now, of course, it's not going to be my patch 1.8.1, uh, the one from the previous video where I just talked about the things that I would like to see, but I do think that there will be some sort of patch 1.8.1 where developers will be fixing some potential bugs, they will be rebalancing a few of the gear sets maybe where they see fit, and I expect that patch 1.8.1 to come out around the time of Easter. Now why Easter? Well that is because I think around that time we're gonna see another seasonal event in the game, just like how we had it with Christmas, where we could basically farm for the cipher keys, uh, and then we will be able to get the Santa suit out of one of those new caches. I think they're going to do something very similar for Easter. Something that was data mined a long time ago. Uh, where a few of these pictures, where you can see a few of these cosmetic outfits that the developer said would never make it into the game. Uh, and now, you know, we fast forward a year later and some of these cosmetic items have actually been introduced into the game. Now, one of those outfits that was data mined was this uh, Easter Bunny outfit. And it's not to say that this is definitely going to be introduced in the game because some of the other cosmetic items are also introduced. But the only way that I can imagine them adding this into the game is through another seasonal event around upcoming Easter. And because they did a seasonal event for Christmas, I think they're going to do a seasonal event at Easter as well. And around that time, they will probably release patch 1.8.1 as well, because this should have also been enough time for the developers to gather enough feedback and data on any of the gear sets to make changes confidently without the need of a PTS server. And I think that as far as division updates go, that will pretty much be it. I don't think we're going to get another map expansion. I don't think we're going to see Central Park, as some people keep saying on the Reddit forums. I don't think we're going to get new game modes, new gear sets. I think it's just going to be this and nothing more. Now, this does not sound like a lot, uh, and I agree it isn't. But I feel that the reason for this is because... Uh, the developers are currently working on a Division 2 game. I've had the idea that they were doing this for a while. If I go to the jobs listed at Massive Studios, there are tens of job opportunities for positions to work on Tom Clancy's Division. Of course, I poked a couple of developers that I know that work at Massive Studios. I poked them with this on Twitter, but of course, I, I could not get a response from them. Even if they knew, they wouldn't tell me. They would not be allowed to tell me. Uh, but when looking at all these job opportunities, uh, senior level designer, senior level artist, technical level designer, these are all job titles that you would expect to work on map expansions or in-game areas. They design the levels, so to speak, unless I'm misreading this in, uh, in a very major way. And I find it very hard to believe that this is all for year 3 DLC. Now, why do I find it hard to believe? That is because... Since patch 1.6, the vast majority of the development of the Division and its DLC has not been done by Massive. It's actually been done by Red Storm. Red Storm created Last Stand, Red Storm created patch 1.7, they created patch 1.8. Uh, I think they also created the map expansion for patch 1.8 and basically everything 1.7 and 1.8 related, they had, they had to go to different studios. Different studios worked on them. 
even on the state of the game, Hamish and Yannick, they had to call to a different studio to talk to the guys there to get an idea of what was going on. They couldn't give the presentation themselves because they had no one at Massive that actually knew enough about the updates to tell you what was going on. From that point on, it's not difficult to conclude that uh, very, very little, if anything at all, for those updates was done by Massive themselves on a division. I would actually be very surprised if they had more than just a handful of people still monitoring the division at Massive. I think it's safe to say that Massive just kind of does state of the game right now and maybe some server side stuff, maybe some Uplay side stuff and that's it and that the rest of whole Massive is either working on a new Avatar game or is working on a Division 2 game and at the Division itself the whole project has been passed on to Red Storm since 1.6 and now Red Storm has passed on the whole project to other Ubisoft studios such as Ubisoft Reflections which was responsible for Global Event 3 and 4 so yeah, why would Massive be hiring new people to work on The Division when they've passed on the project to other major studios a very, very long time ago? And I believe that for these reasons, yeah, it's almost 100% certainty at this point. Uh, these job opportunities, they are for The Division 2, not for The Division 1 Year 3 DLC. And the closer we get to March without a major Year 3 DLC announcement, the more true this seems to be. So as time goes by, I'm only going to get more confident that this is the case. So let's assume that Division 2 is actually a thing, that Massive is actually working on a Division 2 and not the Division 1. They're hiring people for the Division 2. If that's the case, that would be the cause of a, a rather lackluster Year 3 DLC, which then means that... The Division 1 is sort of going on autopilot, we're gonna get some updates, but not a whole lot, it's, it's just what it is right now. Uh, which then makes a lot of people back to the next question, and that is, when The Division 2 is going to come out? And that question, that is a, a very difficult one to answer, but I think I have a good guess on it as well. And uh, I guessed it by looking at Destiny. Destiny 2 came out exactly three years after the first Destiny game. And I believe that The Division 2 is set out to do the exact same thing. A lot of people might get worried right now uh, when they listen to this because of course Destiny 2 was actually a pretty bad game and any Division fan they of course would not want the same thing to happen with The Division 2. And I would agree there, definitely, but me hoping something doesn't change the fact that I truly believe that The Division 2 is going to come out around March 2019. Or at least early 2019, around three years after the release of the first game. And this does indeed mean that we should fully be expecting to see a Division 2 announcement somewhere in June, upcoming E3, or maybe even before that. I mean, Destiny announced their sequel far sooner than E3, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, Destiny also came out in September, so there would have been much less time to market the game between E3 2017 and the Destiny 2 release. The Division 2, as I just said, will come out in March, so it will have nine months to market itself going from June 2018, E3, to March 2019. So I highly doubt that we will see anything meaningful uh, Division 2 related before E3 hits. Although, you know, knowing Ubisoft, knowing their marketing strategies, they might drop something on Twitter or on their YouTube like a couple days before E3, like maybe a week or so back. A picture, a teaser with just some audio or just like one shot of gameplay or just like some weird text on Twitter, something you have to decode, some place or some time or whatever. You know, the typical Ubisoft marketing hype strategy. Get the fan base excited that something is coming up at E3 and then at E3 everybody's like, oh, I knew it, I knew it. Division 2 is coming, but that's not going to be anything significant. So I would be expecting first gameplay, uh, maybe first hands-on stuff, that kind of stuff at upcoming E3. And from that moment on, of course, things are going to move quite fast. We get Gamescom in August, where we potentially get a whole bunch of new info. Uh, goes on in December. Pretty much the same cycle we had with Division 1. A, a closed beta that is console exclusive when you pre-order this or that version of the game. And then like a couple weeks after, hey guys, we also have an open beta, so... You pre-ordered for nothing. So yeah, it's basically, uh, it's that kind of stuff. It is also possible that uh, to keep the community, the, the Division 1 player base warm a bit, they will do something with Halloween, they will have some Halloween events similar to the Christmas event that we had earlier this year and the Easter event that we're very likely to have as well. Maybe some double drop weekends or some global event weekends, you know, to keep players playing and grinding. Uh, but I think that Division 1 related stuff, that is pretty much going to be it. Now again, let me be very clear, everything in this video is speculation based on what I can find, based on how I know the industry works and based on how Ubisoft likes to announce their games and 
kind of just based on what I'm seeing from State of the Game, because they keep saying we have no new info at this time and it's February already. Uh, I'm pretty sure they would have teased something by now if they had something really, really big. It's all speculation. I could be very, very far from the truth. So please keep that in mind. And maybe I'm a bit biased as well, because this is actually where I would like to see The Division go. As good as The Division 1 is right now, as complete as the game is right now, it still has some underlying issues, and I'm not talking about, oh, maybe Predator or Striker's a bit too strong. I'm talking about things that will never be fixed, uh, either because they can't be fixed or because it's too expensive to fix them. I'm talking about netcode, cheaters, uh, bugs that will never get sorted out. All of these things, they can be fixed with a Division 2 where we can have a fresh start and where basically all of these things can be sorted out. I would pay for a full price Division 2 if it was just a game that we have right now with patch 1.8 and then fixing all the things that could never be fixed with the Division 1. Of course, we would get a new storyline, we would get some new skills, talents, gear items, all that stuff. But most importantly, I want the Division 2 to be the game that we have right now. Uh, I want to jump into this game knowing that we have an end game. I want to have a dark zone. I want to have a 4v4 PvP mode. Resistance would be cool, although not a necessity upon launch. Uh, but yeah, open world bosses, HVTs, incursions, all those things that you might look at right now and think, ah, oh, that's not that exciting, but... You'll know when they're missing from the game, especially when you're just fresh jumping in and you're actually trying to get gear. You don't want to be doing the same thing over and over and over and over again because there is no end game. That's what the Division 1 was basically. I do not want that to be the case with Division 2. I want the Division 2 to be the Division 1, patch 1.8, with like all the issues fixed. And then the DLCs that come after that, they can build from there. I mean, there's simply no way that the developers over at Massive or Redstorm or that other studio that I keep forgetting the name about, there's no way that they did not look at Destiny 2 and how poorly it was received upon launch because it didn't do all those things because it went back to vanilla Destiny pretty much. Maybe even worse than that, I don't know, I'm not the expert. But the developers, they must have seen how important it is to get these things right from the start. And they, they must know that they can't make the same mistake as Destiny 2 did. Otherwise, we're gonna end up repeating the same cycle that we went through with the Division 1. And I don't really think that's good for anybody. But yeah, those are basically my thoughts, my expectations for Year 3 DLC and my expectations for the Division 2. Uh, I might get very disappointed if there ends up not being a Division 2. I might get... Very pleasantly surprised if year three ends up being very big because then those job opportunities at Massive Day actually turned out to be for the Division 1. Uh, but for now, this is where I'm going to set my expectations. And maybe I'll come back to this once we get more updates of what's coming for the future. It would be fun to look back at this video in like, I don't know, like a, a couple months to see how right or how wrong I was. It would be funny to, <laughs> to look back at cocky me making all these uh, predictions basically. Anyway, let me know what you all think of this. And also, most importantly, would you be happy if I were to be right? Or would you rather have them expand further on a Division 1 instead of getting a Division 2? As always, guys, that's going to be all for me today. Uh, and I will pretty much see you guys later. Or, like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.